Superconductors have the power to revolutionize how we live. They're already at the core of life-saving MRI machines and super fast levitating trains. And now new research promises to push their power even further with better superconductors that could power quantum computers or increase the efficiency of everything from electric cars to your smartphone. We envision a complete transformation of tomorrow's society. We want to take society into the superconducting century. At its core, electricity is the flow of electrons between atoms. Materials that help facilitate this flow are called conductors and are often made of metals, such as aluminum, copper, and gold. But when you pass electricity through these metals, they lose energy, basically through friction, as the electrons pass through the conductors. The consequence of losing so much energy is more than just generating excess heat. It also costs big money. In the US alone, we lose about 6% of the electricity that we create just by running it through the electric grid. The cost of that wasted electricity adds up to billions of dollars each year. But superconductors have a superpower. They don't waste any electricity and they don't create any excess heat. They do this because the electricity passes through without any friction. But until recently, superconducting was only possible at ultra cold temperatures, somewhere around minus 450 degrees Fahrenheit. These superconductors allow electrons to pair up and move without striking any of the ions that make up the metal. This actually changes the magnetic field around the metal and makes possible the incredible phenomenon of quantum magnetic levitation, where magnets actually hover over the superconductor. Enter Marty McFly. He's not a hoverboard! The problem is it's extremely expensive to keep things so cold, which has sharply limited the use of superconductors. That could all be changing. In 2020, a group of researchers made an incredible discovery. By combining carbon, sulfur, and hydrogen under extreme pressure, they created a superconductor that could work at 59 degrees Fahrenheit, also known as room temperature. This could be the beginning of a revolution in electrical grids, supercomputing, and transportation. Askan Salamat with the University of Nevada in Las Vegas was part of the team that created the breakthrough. It's been a very big push to discover this, this holy grail of physics, which is room temperature superconductivity. As we've demonstrated, it's possible, and if we can drive it into a technology, then it's a real game changer for society, because now we can utilize this unique quantum phenomena at conditions that are habitable to humans. The promise of room temperature superconductors has long captured the popular imagination. It can change your whole society. You are going to have hoverboards and the cars that are going to be levitating. The applications of the levitation going up or down define a lot of energy losses and then a solution to a lot of our energy problems. I'm seeing far ahead into the future, of course, and it may not become that advanced within next few decades, but I'm optimistic that before we know, we will see this within our lifetime. The first superconductor was discovered in 1911, when a Dutch physicist named Heike Kamerling Onis cooled mercury down to almost absolute zero, the lowest temperature believed to be possible. In addition to creating some darn cold mercury, Onis also realized that the resistance to electrons flowing through had completely disappeared. He won the Nobel Prize in Physics a few years later. Fast forward to today. By adding carbon and sulfur to hydrogen, the researchers were able to lower the amount of pressure needed to bring out its superconducting properties. But they still needed a whole lot of pressure, about 40 million pounds per square inch to be precise. That's basically like sitting 3,000 miles underground near the core of the Earth. They were able to achieve this incredible pressure by pressing these three elements in between two diamonds. For all that effort, the team was able to make a small speck of superconducting material that worked at 59 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a promising start. This is a material where hydrogen can actually undergo metallization, become a metal, and one of its predicted properties is room temperature superconductivity. The limitation there is you require huge amounts of pressures to get to this state. You have to exceed the pressure in the center of the Earth. We've been trying to conjure up different ways of doping hydrogen to allow us to retain those remarkable properties, but to lower the pressure. And so to do that, one of the pathways we've come up with is basically developing this protocol to use carbon, sulfur and hydrogen mix them up in this magic potion at very high pressures and lead to an organically derived material that 
exhibits this remarkable property. Now, the goal is to see if these room temperature superconductors can be created without such a massive amount of pressure. But perhaps the greatest significance of this recent breakthrough is that even the scientists most deeply involved don't quite understand how it works. Obviously, the technology is very exciting and, and financially rewarding and we can change society, but you know, finding a glitch in physics where you're the person that caused that glitch and causing a whole rethink of a certain model is very exciting for us. We as a species have developed very complex tools and a very complex understanding of our environment, but we're still in our infancy of truly appreciating how complicated and beautiful Mother Nature is.